Welcome back to the Nightly Sports Call. If you want to chime in on our Pirates discussion, they opted to pick up the club option for Andrew McCutcheon, $14.5 million. They decided not to pick up the $1.5 million option on Chris Stewart. That's a good decision. The guy batted 180 last year, and they got uh, Diaz. It was time for that up. to end. It was yeah, time for yeah. the Stewart thing to end. Yeah. I mean, I have no problem with that at all. I think the big thing is um, Cervelli has to stay healthy. And, exactly. And Diaz has to prove he can hit. If that catcher spot is solidified by those two, I don't, you know, Gun coming back, there's not a lot you need to do if you keep everyone intact, you know? So Add a starting pitcher as long as you keep McCutcheon, and I still think they're in the mix. now. Here's, I, why, here's why they're not going to add a starting pitcher. I'll be shocked because they have all five guys back, plus they have Glass now, Kingham. Uh, Possibly Keller later in the year. Braun. Bra you know what I'm saying? Or yeah. Brault. Or yeah. Brault. I mean, they've got like eight – eight pitchers already that they feel like this is our guys. Now, I think the thing that they've got to take into account, they were so lucky with injuries this year. I mean, Tyon had his, you know, yeah, situation, yeah, but for the most part, what did they use? Seven, you know, until the September call-up thing when they used Brawl a couple of times, they basically used six pitchers, right, for the entire season. Yeah, Trevor Williams was one of them. And, um, the, and then they added, you know, they, they gave Brault a couple of starts. So, I mean, I think they basically used seven pitchers, which is unheard of. It's tough to go out and get a number one guy. But if they could get a guy that's a number two guy, because I still think Garrett Cole, Tyon, Nova are in that three kind of guy mold to, if you're yeah. going to compete for a World Series. Uh, but if you get a guy in that mix, now you have four guys that are relatively the same. And then you just throw anyone as a fifth starter, whether it's Brawl, another lefty, uh, a, a lefty that they might need, or Trevor Williams, or Glasnow, give them another chance, or depending on yeah, who it is. Yeah, they're going to give Glasnow chances. Yeah, I, I think I, I think there are you you know if Gunn comes back, McCutcheon stays, or a starting pitcher, a good bullpen guy, high leverage guy, and then they have a chance to compete. I don't know if they right. can, but they have a chance. Yeah. All right, let's go out to the phone line. Let's go out to Pam and Natron Heights. How you doing, Pam? Hello. Yep, you're on the air. What's up, Pam? Yes, I just wanted to say that Pittsburgh really needs to start spending money on the players that they have because I've been a baseball fan for a long time. I grew up gratefully watching Roberto Clemente play at Forbes Field, and I stopped watching Pirate Baseball whenever they got rid of Bonds and Benia and Van Slyke. They just, you know, it, it, there was no reason for them not to pay them then. And there's no reason for them not to pay them now. You have to build on what you have. And the fan base that they have now is going to fall if they don't keep certain players like Harrison and McCutcheon and people that people like to follow. Uh, you know what? Thanks a lot, Pam. I appreciate your, your call. I, I agree with them spending more money. I don't know if I agree with what Pam said on spending more money with some of the players that you have. You know, I think they need to upgrade from outside well, the organization. Her, yeah, but to but her maybe point, McCutcheon is a guy. Keep that you your need best to players yeah. is what she's saying. You know, and I mean, another guy that, you know, you're probably losing at the trade deadline or next year at, at this time, you're, you're probably losing Garrett Cole. So, yeah. I mean, to you me, might lose Garrett Cole this offseason. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. To, to, to me, there are guys that they have, you know, that they could sign. And then there's other players that they, I don't have a problem with them letting go. And, you know, a great example, they would have been crazy to sign, to sign Russell Martin. I was just going to say, you know, him. yeah. That being said, <laughs> the catcher position, Cervelli was okay for one, you know, one year, I guess. But my point is that, you know, there's give and take, I think, sometimes. And I don't even know if Cole would want to sign a long term deal here, even no, he if wouldn't. he was. I think one he, of wants, the to go to he the wants to go to the or, West Coast he wants and to go out of this. Yeah organization that's the feeling that I get yeah and, um, I, and I, from what everything I know I you know it's it's not rosy between him and the front office and him and the well, manager. especially because what it was like a twenty thousand yeah. dollar raise but it, get the it's one not year. just that him and the manager don't see eye to eye on yeah. some things and him and the front office from everything I've been told it doesn't seem like that's going very well so I think if he, he would love to get on the first train out of town <laughs> well LA wouldn't be a bad spot uh for him to go he's from there his wife yeah. from there and everything yeah. so Hey, uh, Paul, we got a tweet here for you. Mike, Mike R8771 just tweeted me. He said, ask Paul what Pitt's record will be this year in hoops. He's talking about if they stink, will Stallings get the axe? I don't think he's going to get the axe this year. They're gonna I think unless they're, you know, I think year. if they're 2-29 and 29 or something, maybe. But I don't think they will be. I think they'll probably win about 10 to 12 games. 
as long as there's progress from the start of the season to the end, they get a little better each week and there's clear development of the players, I think he's got to be back for another year. I mean, they're not going to pay, you know, to buy him out. No. That... When he's showed some progress, when it's his group now, it's his team, and they've got pretty much everyone coming back, why would you fire him? Now, if they're awful, like really awful. What if they don't win a game in the ACC, which is possible? That, I mean, maybe they go and they roll through have some to, of these yeah. non-conference games. Here's, here, here's the thing. If they go 6-6 six and six in their non-conference or whatever, say they have 13 non-conference games, they go 6-7 and seven or something, and then go winless in the ACC, especially if they go winless and they get their doors blown off yeah. a bunch of times, that's different. But it, to me, if they go like 8-4 and four in the preseason and even go 4-4, and like what? they did last year, four you know, wins. Four and, what is it, six, four and, what do they play, 18 games? Four and 14. So you're talking about them going maybe 12, you know, and No 16. progress, but you move on to next year and see what they 12 can do. 12 and 16. But my point is, if in February they're now all of a sudden starting to be competitive, you know, playing these ACC teams really close, maybe beating one or two of them in, in you know, yeah. where it's a disaster in the beginning of the season and it gets a little better and you can see clear progress with some of the players getting better and better and better, why would you fire them? It makes no sense. Like Pitt fans, it would make no sense. Do you know why? Because they would have to start all over again. Exactly. And that makes no – if you've got a guy here who just put a foundation in, he brings his – what do they have, 12 or 13 new players in? Two guys coming back. If they show progress – why, when 11 of those 12 are coming back, why would you fire them? Now, no. if next year there's not more progress, you know, say they go 11 or 12 wins this year, next year it better be, you know, 17, 18 wins at the minimum, then there's a problem. I think he's the coach of Pitt basketball for two years, this year and next year at least. Right. At least I could see that. Through next year. I could see that, but again... If he goes 0 and 31, then you might. You I might mean, have to make there's decisions. extremes. Yes, yeah. there's extremes, but I don't think that's going to be. A yeah, case. I don't think so either. Let's go out to Frank and find you. How you doing, Frank? Hi, uh, good, Rich. Paul, thanks, thanks thank for you. Going. Here's two of the many reasons I think the Pirates will be terrible next year: Marte and Polanco. They're locked into cheap contracts. Those bums. What do you think? I don't know if they're bums at all. I just think that, you know, Polanco had some injuries. Marte, yeah. obviously, the steroid well, issue. Yeah. Um, uh, those guys have proven that they could be good players. I'm still they have to, optimistic about to play better than they've played. Yeah. I mean, it's not, next year, Polanco has to be somewhere close to the player they think he was when they, you know, brought him up. And you remember all the, you know, hype about him. And basically, it was like you couldn't trade him, you know, because he was going to be the, the second, you know, coming yeah. of Roberto Clemente or something out there. The reality is he's not a good fielder. I think he could become a decent ba- hitter. I think he could become a good hitter. He's not a good fielder. I don't think he'll ever become a really good fielder. And he's a horrendous base I was runner. Just okay. Say that. And then Marte yeah. is, you know, not a very good base runner, but he's a great fielder. You know, he doesn't hit for power. And you know what? This year, with all the stuff that happened, he really never came around and hit for average. He's got to get back to where he hits for average, maybe a little pop, 14, 15 home runs, and Polanco has to hit. If those two hit, you can live with some of their deficiencies. But if they don't hit, boy. It's hard to watch those two guys. Do they try the Marte center field experiment again if McCutcheon comes I back? I would be shocked. Yeah, I would be too. I yeah, would be shocked. I don't think so. All right, we got to take a break here. Back with more of your phone calls, some of your tweets coming up next. Stay right there.